Alumni Association. Thank you for joining us today and welcome to today's webinar, Ask the Recruiter LinkedIn. Today's webinar will be focusing on how to improve your profile with some great tips from our recruiters today. And before I get started, I'd like to um, present some um, slides and information about the Alumni Association. All right, as always, we like to thank our members and donors of the Alumni Association for powering our alumni webinar series. Thank you so much for your support. To learn more about membership, please join us at umenalumni.org slash membership. All right, and today's uh, webinar is presented by Maroon and Gold Network. The Maroon and Gold Network is a free online platform from the University of Minnesota Alumni Association for career-related advice, networking, and mentorship. Sign up today at maroonandgoldnetwork.umnalumni.org. Today's webinar is also presented by our Minnesota Alumni Market. The Minnesota Alumni Market is a first of its kind online store dedicated to supporting U of M alumni businesses and their products. You can learn more about these products at mnalumnimarket.com. All right. Um, you might be also interested in some upcoming webinars and um, courses. We have a masterclass on LinkedIn. So if you like today's presentation, but want to take some time to really focus on your profile and work on um, navigating LinkedIn and working on improving um, just your marketability, feel free to register for our masterclass on LinkedIn. And that deadline is tomorrow, October 2nd. And as you can see here, we have a number of upcoming events. All of these can be found at umnalumni.org slash virtual. If um, you can also reach out to me at luber at umn.edu. All right. If you're listening in today and you'd like to listen by phone instead, you can uh, dial the number on your screen, which is 646-558-8658, and then dial in the webinar ID, which is 965-8705-3442. And today, if you have any questions, feel free to drop those into our Q&A box, and we'll save the last 20 minutes or so for questions um, from our audience members that we receive from our, through our Q&A box. So thank you, and we'll begin introducing our panelists. Our first panelist today is Hannah Broder. Hannah Broder is, is the Division Director of Robert Half Finance and Accounting in St. Paul, Minnesota, where she leads her team in the permanent placement of finance and accounting professionals. Hannah has three years of experience in the staffing, agent, in staffing industry. She joined Robert Half in February 2018, starting as recruiting manager with Robert Half Finance and Accounting in Bloomington. She was then promoted in June 2019 to her current role. Hannah has a Bachelor of, Bachelor of Arts degree in English from the University of Minnesota at Morris. In her spare time, she serves as the Vice President of the Youth Professionals Board for Cornerstone Advocacy Services, a local nonprofit organization that supports women who experience trauma as a result of domestic violence and other crimes. Thank you and welcome, Hannah. Next, we have Ashley. I'm um, sorry. <laughs> Next, we have Lexi L Latshaw. Lexi Latshaw is a talent acquisition for signature consultants in charge of hiring for all of the Midwest, including our six core offices, Chicago, Minneapolis, Des, Des Moines, Deerfield, Deerfield, and so forth. Lexi has been with signature consultants for three years, starting out as associate recruiter and, been, and being promoted three times to her senior technical recruiter role. Before transitioning to Signatures Talent Acquisitions team. Lexi heads up the culture committee for the talent acquisition and oversees the team's Friday morning breakfast, which comprises personal and professional development activities. Lexi currently resides in Chicago, Illinois and sits, sits out of the Signatures office there. Thank you and welcome Lexi. All right. Next we have Ashley. Ashley Fogarty, um, is a graduate from the University of Minnesota Twin Cities where she majored in communication studies and was involved on campus as a member of Delta Gamma fraternity and admissions ambassador and intern for the Gopher Sports Marketing. She currently works at Avenica, an, an education to work company, as a managing director leading recruitment strategy and execution for their North and Eastern regions. Avenica partners with employers, job seekers, and universities to bridge the gap from education to employment. In her free time, Ashley likes to watch the Vikings, go for walks by the river with her puppy, and travel. Thank you and welcome, Ashley. All right, 
And then last but not least, we have Prince Saw. Prince Saw is a self-starter whose, drive, whose driving force has been to help others. He currently works at the University of Minnesota Office of Information Technology as a talent acquisition specialist. To many, he is the first person that comes to mind whenever they are facing challenges and are looking for assistance. He has, been an, an, he has an amazing ability to cultivate relationships with people. Prince is passionate about diversity, equity, and inclusion. Prince continues to work on diversifying the Office of Information Technology through his recruitment efforts and streamlined selection process. Prince graduated from the University of Minnesota Twin Cities with a BA in Communication Studies. He has worked with Emerge Community Development and Sever, um, Sever Minnesota Action Network, as well as being a mentor for the National Association of Black Accountants and Brand Lab. Thank you and welcome, Prince. All right, so we'll get started with our panel questions. And the first question is just tell us a little bit more about yourself and what intrigues you about this topic of LinkedIn. And we'll just start with Hannah. Great, thanks, Rebecca. Um, my name is Hannah. Unlike Rebecca mentioned, I'm with Robert Half. Um, really, uh, and it kind of a tough year to be in the job market, but um, I, you know, favorite part about my job is supporting job seekers um, and being able to coach them through the process, whether, you know, actively seeking or passively seeking a new opportunity. Um, I use LinkedIn every day. I think it's an amazing tool um, for job seekers and recruiters and hiring managers alike. Um, and, you know, essentially it is a virtual or a digital um, equivalent to the paper resume. Um, and I think that that's pretty exciting. Thank you. We'll have Lexi and Ashley then Prince go. Hi everyone. Just like Rebecca said, I'm Lexi. Um, I think something that really intrigues me about LinkedIn is this, the amount of functions that it has, right? You have the ability to search for a job, but recruiters also have the ability to post their jobs on there. So you can apply for jobs. You can really let your creative side show, I think, more than you can on just a piece of paper when it comes to a resume. So if a recruiter is looking at your profile, they definitely know a little bit more about you and your involvement than um, just the piece of paper can share. And and I know a lot of the times people always say, keep your resume to one page, depending on experience. So I think that LinkedIn just gives you the ability to, to really put yourself out there and make sure that it's everything um, that you've been able to be involved in during your time in whatever you choose to do. So that's something that I really like about LinkedIn. And, and just like Hannah was saying, I spend majority of my days on LinkedIn. Um, so I, I love this topic and I'm excited to talk about it a little bit more. Thank you. Hi everyone, like Rebecca said, I'm Ashley Fogarty with Avenica. I think echoing what Hannah and Lexi said, I love LinkedIn. It's such a great tool to really add your personality to it. A big thing that I focus on with the grads that I work with is looking beyond just your resume and looking at other things that go into making you you that can be a good fit for a company beyond just the job description. And I think LinkedIn is a great way to do that. You can put on all of your different activities and involvement and put your own personal touch on it. So employers are able to get to know you as a person in addition to you and your experience. And thank you everyone for joining us. Um, I think the best thing that I like about LinkedIn is um, thinking back on my day as a student when I was trying to uh, find my job, I was able to connect with so many individuals and the connection piece of LinkedIn is something that always intrigues me. Currently, I'm hiring about 100 IT professionals um, for the Office of Information Technology and being able to be connected with so many individuals that may not be in IT, but they have some type of connections that are in IT and be able to expand my network and be able to uh, fill most of our positions. Um, really love LinkedIn, love the tools and um, the different functionality of it. Great. Thank you so much for those introductions and telling us a little, a little bit more about your interest in LinkedIn. Our next question here is how common would you say it is for recruiters to use LinkedIn and in what ways do you tend to use it? And we'll start with Prince this time. 
Yeah, I'm in LinkedIn pretty much an hour a day at the very least, um, talking with candidates, trying to sell them on coming to work for the university, work for our department, um, answering any questions that they may have. Um, I say the biggest thing that I like to use when um, when it comes to connecting with candidates is figuring out what skills they have. Um, I have the I have what they call the recruiter seat over with LinkedIn, um, so it allows me to see the profiles and allows me to search. And most of the times when I'm searching, I'm searching for jobs job um, titles and what skills the person has. Um, so if you're using LinkedIn, but you don't have any skills on your profile, um, recommend you definitely add more skills to your profile, have your friends and family endorse you and coworkers um, endorse you for those skills, because um, they populate into our search. And that's how I um, determine who I connect with. Okay, thank you. And next we'll have Ashley go, then Lexi and then Hannah, work our way, work our way backwards. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, I agree with everything that Prince said too. I use LinkedIn every single day. I have usually multiple tabs open at once while I'm working and LinkedIn is always one of them. Um, it's something that I use to understand candidate skills and background, but also kind of as Lexi had mentioned earlier, a lot of times people keep their resume to one page on what they think is relevant, but there might be other positions or experiences they've had that they might include on LinkedIn since they have the freedom to have more on their page there. So I'll look at all of their experiences, I'll look at their skills, their endorsements, and also recommendations they might have from previous employers or coworkers that they've partnered with in the past. Perfect. Um, I would say that I use LinkedIn, just like they were saying, majority of my day, right? It's how we find candidates to fit all of our needs and positions. Um, it sometimes is applicants, but I would say most of the time I'm sourcing these people um, to fill the positions at Signature. So I would say I spend most of my time during the day, during my workday on LinkedIn and how I use it is just like Prince was saying, I use the recruiter function. So it is important to have everything up to date. I would have as many keywords as possible, really make Make sure if you're open to new opportunities that your profile aligns with that um, because that way recruiters know um, that you are available to be reached out to um, so I use it in that regard but I also use it to as a social network with my friends professionally right I love to be connected with the people that I went to college with or even people that you know I I've met at different events like this right to connect with and say hey thank you so much for for your insight right and to keep up with them and what they're doing now so those are just a few ways that, that I use LinkedIn in the day-to-day. -day. So um, at Robert Half, I would say LinkedIn primarily helps us to source for and identify candidates. And obviously that, that's very common, but I think that it's extremely common for recruiters to use LinkedIn. In fact, um, according to one survey, 87% of recruiters use the platform to vet or find um, job candidates. And, you know, out of all social networks combined, um, that that's pretty significant. Um, you know, I think the, the number one thing that that, you know, my team keeps in mind and that recruiters keep in mind is we use search terms and filters to find the right candidates. And so um, it's important to remember that, you know, landing into that recruiter search doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, a matter of happenstance, right? Um, you can truly craft your profile um, and, and, you know, rank in LinkedIn algorithms and all of that um, crazy science nonsense um, to um, really put yourself in the light of the positions that you're the most interested in. You know, there's probably no standard for how different recruiters utilize LinkedIn, um, particularly in sourcing candidates. Um, for example, a small business hiring manager might use LinkedIn's advanced search filters um, to find candidates within their network, but an agency recruiter might pay for LinkedIn recruiter to expand their networking and search capabilities. Um, very lucky to have that tool, but at Robert Half, um, LinkedIn is, is more of a, a one of many tools um, that we use. And, you know, we, our vetting process um, goes much deeper. We really try to maximize the match between our candidates and what's important to them and what they're looking for and our clients and what that environment is. Um, but first and foremost, LinkedIn is a, an incredibly important tool in sourcing for candidates for us. Great, thank you so much. And I think some of you may have touched on some of our next question, um, some bits there, but uh, maybe you can expand a little bit more on this. So 
what do you typically look for as a recruiter on a candidate's profile and what are some ways that a candidate can strengthen or improve their application or their profile rather? And so we'll start with um, we'll go Lexi, Ashley, Prince, and then Hannah. Perfect. Um, so what do recruiters or employers look for in a candidate's profile? So just like Rebecca just said, we've touched on this a little bit, but I think the biggest thing that I personally look for is personality and involvement um, because that's the, the things that can't necessarily come through on your resume. So that's something that I really try to pick up from the LinkedIn profile um, is the things you've been involved in on campus or extracurricular activities or things that you do in the community. I think that that's something that we really look for. Um, in a candidate's profile and then I would say how you could um, strengthen your application is to always attach your resume. I know it's a really easy function with the quick apply that LinkedIn, the feature that LinkedIn has and if companies have that turned on all you have to do is it's a one click of a button and your application is there but I would strongly encourage to always make sure that your resume is attached to that application um, and I would do some research on LinkedIn when you apply to a job right search human resources or talent acquisition sometimes the job posting will give you the job posters information I would try to connect with them send them a little snippet about how you just applied for the job and that you're really interested and in, and this might be the skill set that you bring to the table um, so really trying to connect with different people who who might be able to give you some information about the role or just to show that you are really interested and invested in the, in the application process I agree. I think the big things that I look for on the LinkedIn profile is personality and things that maybe weren't on people's resume when they first applied. Um, I think getting to know you as a person is just really, really important. So you make sure your profile is up to date. You obviously have all of your positions and involvement on there, but then you can add things to it. Like you can upload photos if you did a volunteer event with your company, or you can add in special projects that you might have worked on. Just make it really personal and show people who you are. I think that's the big thing that I look for. Another thing that we are looking for right now, too, is the people who have the like open to work function. They have that on your photo. If you are looking for a position and you're not working right now, you're ready to work. That's a big function that we're using right now, too, for people who are eager to get started right away. Got it. Thank you. And then um, for me, I'm looking for more like skills. Um, location is also a big thing because we are hiring IT professionals. So where are you located? Are you open to relocate or not? And then um, as the other two said, um, are you open to new opportunities? Um, there are individuals that um, aren't looking for a new job and I don't want to bug them. And there are individuals that are open to a new job. Um, I also like to see that you've um, made some type of interest with the university. Um, I think it gives, it allows me to give, um, provide a warm um, greeting and say, hey, thank you for um, inter being interested in the university, um, maybe be, be interested in a career at the university. Those are the things that I'm looking at. And my primary functionality that I use LinkedIn for is just more for sourcing candidates. So really getting that interest um, from the candidates, seeing that they're interested and in helping them through that recruiting process. Um, so I think for what I look for primarily in a candidate's profile, and I think the most important is just to have current and thorough information. You know, be f be sure to fill out every section in that in link within LinkedIn. Um, you know, job skills, certifications, um, education, interest. Um, I think that there's also different areas, like if you have a blog or some sort of portfolio, that you can include that type of information as well. Um, just like a resume, LinkedIn is a really powerful marketing tool when it's properly written. And so I think it's also important to, I, I mean, the same rules tend to apply, right? You want to use, um, you know, concise, punchy language versus um, maybe, you know, drawing things out 18 pages long kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I think a couple of other things that, that I look for, but that can be um, very helpful for job seekers is to use the summary section. Um, it's, a, it's a space where you can kind of tell your story and um, be 
specific, you know, an ROI is some sort of value that you've provided in, in previous employment or something that you bring to the table, career goals you're working on now, um, that's a, a great space to, to kind of personalize um, and highlight what's what you're looking for, what's important to you. Um, I think that this, there's a headline and a summary area. So, um, you know, just filling out to, to completion um, is, is really important. And, you know, to, to strengthen an application, I would say, um, really just uh, having that, that information filled out to completion. When you find, when, if you think about yourself or other, maybe other profiles that are out there, you want to, to stand out when a recruiter is looking at your profile. So um, just being as complete as possible and, and keeping it as professional as possible, I would say is important. And I remember when we um, prepared for today's uh, presentation, webinar rather, uh, we spoke somewhat about uh, specializations and certifications and how it may not always be apparent. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Sure. So um, I think I'm, as far as certifications, um, and, and this could even boil down to keywords, right? Um, for example, I use Salesforce, but that might not be something that I would include on, on my profile as a skill or an expertise. However, you know, that's an important software. And even as a passive job, job seeker, if you have those types of keywords, even little tidbits of information, um, those keywords are going to flag your profile for search algorithms from um, hiring managers. And so um, I think Th really think through what those important pieces of information are. Um, also, you know, some positions have different requirements. And so making sure to have, you know, whether it's whatever kind of certifications there are, it's hard for me because I'm accounting specific and I'm trying to keep it a little bit more broad for, you know, all job seekers, but um, mm -hmm. keep a keyword focus, I would say. Excellent. Okay, let's see our next question here. All right, so what appropriate LinkedIn etiquette? Uh, we'll go with, sorry, Ashley, then Prince, uh, Hannah, then Lexi. That makes sense. Hopefully you remember the order. <laughs> <laughs> I think biggest LinkedIn etiquette is keeping it professional, remembering that it's a professional networking site. It's a professional place for people to get to know each other and use their skills. Um, so you want to keep your posts and language kind of within that. Obviously, like we've mentioned a couple of times, personality is important. You can be you and show things that are really personal while still keeping it really professional. I think in terms of reaching out to recruiters, um, I know we touched on this a little bit earlier, but a great way to get in contact with recruiters when you're looking for a job is to show them like, hey, you know, I'm interested in this position because of this, or I have XYZ skills, and that's why I think I'd be a good fit. I just applied to the position that's a much better way to kind of reach out to someone and get um, that connection versus just sending them a message like, could you look at my profile and tell me if I'm a fit for any jobs you have open? Mm -hmm. I think seeing that initiative and excitement that you've looked at this position, you feel like it's a great fit for you and you want to connect, that's going to really catch someone's eye rather than like, hey, can you look at my profile and tell me if a job's a fit for me or not? Kind of. And then for me, I think the two biggest thing is definitely keeping it professional and another thing, uh, be original. Um, I, get, I get a message every day with a line that says, please let me know if you're open to discuss about this position. And sometimes, at first I used to call candidates every time I got that and they'd be like, well, you called me. And I'm like, well, your message said, let's discuss this. Do you have questions? And they're like, no, I just want to talk about the position. Um, so I realized that is just a very standard um, message that a lot of people just send. Um, if you have questions about the position, I'm more than willing to answer any of them and communicate with you about it. But uh, sending that standard message to get my interests, um, no more, I guess. <laughs> Great. Um, I, I would definitely echo what's been shared so far. Um, I think it's important to remember that LinkedIn is more of a professional social network, um, separating it from other social media. So um, one thing I think that um, is important is to have a great headshot or a photo. You don't need to you know, pay big bucks for a professional photo by any means, but make sure it puts your best professional face forward. You don't want to, you know, dress nicely, um, 
dress for the job you want is kind of how we like to say it. Um, and the photo is a good place to do that. Um, you don't want a messy background and you, you know, try to find a photo or, or take a photo that has good resolution. It's a first impression and that's going to be what grabs attention. And so um, that's a good, uh, I think, piece to remember as well as, you know, having good etiquette. Um, I think that as you're engaging, um, it, you know, it, it can also go beyond just applying for jobs and reaching out to recruiters. You know, people are sharing uh, market intel and, you know, job market um, information and while engaging with others um, to, to keep it professional, you know, concise um, is important. And then I would also say that um, for good etiquette, you want to keep tried not to make your profile too broad. You wanna keep it specific to your career, um, what's specific to you. Um, and then, you know, that, that can really help elevate the skills that you bring to the table that are in demand skill, skills or skill sets. Sorry, yeah, that's behind the scenes here. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I definitely would echo what they all just mentioned. Um, another thing that I typically think about when I think about LinkedIn etiquette is obviously with recruiters, just like us, right? We, we source using LinkedIn, using these keywords. And, and sometimes you get messages that are completely out of the blue. You're like, this is not what I'm looking for, right? Because maybe you just had a keyword in your resume and the, the recruiter didn't necessarily look at your profile. And, and you, there's some skill sets I'm sure you receive a ton of messages. Um, so just giving people grace, right? I think that's a big thing on LinkedIn that comes along with etiquette is whenever I get a message, I always respond, you know, thank you so much for, for reaching out to me and letting me know, but I, you know, I'm not interested. And I think that's one of the best ways to, to continue a professional um, manner using LinkedIn is to just be kind, um, but also just to remember that, you know, everyone is using LinkedIn for their own agenda and keeping that that in mind during your time using LinkedIn, but just keeping it professional, utilizing your personality and putting that into your profile, just like everyone else has already mentioned. Thank you. I think with that, Lexi, too, it's a really good to remember that the position maybe they sent you now isn't the right fit and you like it isn't right, but that could change later on. There might be a position mm -hmm. later down the road that is the right fit. And by keeping the door open and responding and acting with grace in that conversation, it could open up a door later on down the road. Yep, yeah, I totally agree. All right, I think that brings us to our last part of today's webinar, which is our open Q&A. And I apologize for the slides a moment ago. I was trying to manage some of the questions in the Q&A and got a little um, sidetracked there. But we have tons of questions coming in. We have about eight questions in, in the Q&A box. And um, I'm gonna field some of, that, some of them at you, but feel free to pick some out if you'd like to address them as well. Um, there's a question here. And the question here says, that's from an anonymous person. I am a physician with a public health degree. I receive a lot of job postings for physician assistants, um, which, which is a completely different position. I think this is a search term filter issue. Is there a way to not receive these? I'm assuming that he's uh, the person's talking about um, maybe the automatically generated um, emails that LinkedIn sent. Because um, mm -hmm. in that case, I think it's more be and maybe just be your settings and profile um, settings as far as what notifications you want to be, and then also what are you searching for. Um, yeah, I think that may be what this person's talking about. But if it is recruiters that are reaching out to you, yeah. sending you like um, job opportunities, there is a way to turn off your in-mail function, mm -hmm. um, like automated gener like generated emails or in-mails to you. So you can turn that function off. Just be aware that that might be cutting out other opportunities if, if you are looking for a job. Great. Our next question here is, I have a limited amount of time to upkeep my LinkedIn what is the top aspect of my profile I should focus on? I think keeping up to date with your current position. If you have up-to-date job information, I think summaries and headlines 
they're important to show your personality, but those keywords in the actual positions that you have is what's going to pull you into someone's search if they're sourcing for candidates. So making sure that that's up to date, I think is most important. To echo that, I think, think of LinkedIn as a living document. You know, if someone isn't necessarily looking, um, they might ha not have updated their resume in 10 years, but I think it's an important um, tool to, to just kind of keep updated. It's it kind of ongoing upkeep. Um, once it's up to date, it, it might not take a whole lot of maintenance, but um, mm -hmm. to get it there, I would I definitely also agree if there's any additional substance, I would say the relevant skills are, are, or your current position, um, what you're doing in your current role um, would be the most important to include. And then just having thorough inf information on the profile, like previous positions, even if it's just dates, include that, and then education, certifications, the, the kinds of things that would note whether you might be qualified or not for an opportunity would be important to include as well. Sorry, there, it looks like there's a request here if we can speak a little bit slower um, when responding to questions, just because there's some folks um, taking notes. Um, I'd also like to know that I'll, I'll be sending out the recording to all those who registered for today's webinar. And so you'll have another opportunity to uh, maybe review the recording again so that you can catch up with great information that's provided here. All right. All right, the next question, I think we kind of touched on it earlier. How important is it to have a photo? And looks like the jury's in. It's very important to have a photo in some ways. Uh, would you say there's any caveats to that or would you all agree that that's super important to have a photo? A professional photo. Yep, I was just yeah. going to say the same thing. <laughs> professional photo, uh, be aware of like your background and surroundings. Um, just keep it professional. If we can tell if you crop someone out or if it's from a different type of event. Right. Maybe some, nick some of those networking events with beverages in your hand and that sort of deal. <laughs> I would almost, I would almost argue that if you have an up to date profile and you just don't have a picture, um, I would almost argue that that's not necessarily the worst thing ever either. Um, but if you can have a picture, it's definitely beneficial. But if you have an up to date profile and everything else looks great, your picture isn't, I mean, going to make it or break your profile, in my opinion. Great. Looks like there's a question here regarding project management. Is project management a useful certification um, across a range of positions? So curious to know your thoughts on project management as a certification. I see project management certification. Sometimes, again, I'm accounting and finance specific, so I don't know how much I can give towards that, but. Um, Anything Six Sigma related, um, anything additional I th think can help. But one other thing that can help um, elevate a candidate is continued education with Excel. Um, Excel is a really commonly used to, um, software and keeping up on that. And if you, you know, have any sort of like course that you've taken, that, that would um, definitely be something that shows that your Excel skills are, um, you know, refined. Got it. And then for us, since we're in the IT space, um, it does definitely help. Um, we are moving more to um, agile world where um, you are doing a lot of um, sprints and um, teams type um, and projects and initiatives. So it's really important that um, somebody can come in and know um, how to keep um, our teams on track and things like that. So it definitely helps. Great. The next question here is, do you recommend mixing in volunteer experience with employment experience chronologically, or is it better to list things by importance? I would list things chronologically, but with that, I think you could have like a work experience and volunteer experience section um, so that people can see you know, what you've been doing in your employment in a chronological way, but also can see what you've been doing for volunteer work in addition to your employment. Yeah, I had to just click on my LinkedIn um, screen right now. I'm like, I'm pretty sure there's a volunteer experience section and there is, I'm looking there at is. it right now. Um, so I'd say um, if you could put it just in your uh, volunteer experience, um, it definitely helps. I agree. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I think it depends on how much experience you have and how relevant that volunteer experience is as well to one's profile. So I'm just, just thinking if it's a recent grad who has had maybe a substantial volunteer experience for maybe a year somewhere, and that's where they've gained the most of their direct experience in this particular area, you know, maybe that's something they want to highlight in bullet points as opposed to somebody who has been working in the field for some time and volunteer is more of a something they like to do on their own time and uh, may not have as high involvement in it as maybe someone who has more time to do so. So that's there. Um, looks like there's a question here, looking for tips to repackage skills and experience and market myself to an entirely different field. Um, so they're mid-career with a broad range of skills and willing to relocate. So I think they're looking for advice on repackaging their skills um, and kind of reimagining re their profile. What advice do you have there? Number one would be include soft skills, even if that's in the summary um, of a section. Um, soft skills are, are, are opposite, I guess you could say, of technical skills, um, critical thinking, listening, um, the, the things that are maybe a little bit more abstract, um, decision making, problem solving, those types of things, um, like detail oriented, can show what you bring to the table that would show that you'd be willing to learn, able to learn and adapt. Those sorts of, of um, keywords, I think, would help illuminate your profile and, and draw in um, a potential recruiter or hiring manager um, and, and give you a fighting chance against candidates who maybe have a stacked LinkedIn profile that's a spitting image of a job description. I think really utilizing that summary section as well and explaining kind of the why of like, I've been doing this for X amount of years. I'm excited to make a change into this industry for this reason. And if there's any continuing education that you might have done or like courses you may have taken to help understand or help build your skill set in that area, in the new career area, put that on your profile too. Great. Um, Look, seeing here, there's a question. Um, how much weight do you put on on the recommendation section? Should people seek or attempt to build the section? What are your thoughts there? I'm the type that I read that um, just to get a better understanding of how the person's peers or managers view that person work. Um, it adds to your resume, but that adds to your profile, but I wouldn't say it subtracts like not having it. Um, it's going to make me not reach out to you. I was going to say it's definitely an added bonus and thing that I do love to read, but it's not something that I disqualify a candidate for not having. Agreed. Great. Um, looks like here. Okay. Any recommendations for a recent liberal arts grad um, in particular who may not be trained for, for a specific career and are open to a range of entry level positions. Many of your suggestions, especially with regards to keywords, seem geared towards those who know what they're looking for. Thoughts, thoughts for those who may not. Connect, connect, and connect. <laughs> yeah, connect with people um, that are in professions that you're interested in. Um, I was once in that space too, and I remember connecting with the people in the advertising world all the way to accountant and everything, um, having informational meetings with them. Now you can do that over Zoom so you can um, you can run through more of those and then um, see what passions that you're interested in and then how you can get into those entry level positions at those companies. Most definitely. Absolutely. I was gonna say, we work exclusively with new graduates. So I do this every single day at Avenica. I think my best advice for people who don't know exactly what they want to do is think about what you have done so far. What did you like about that position? What did you not like about it? And it doesn't have to be a professional role. It could be, I've been serving in bartending throughout college as a new grad to pay tuition. I really liked doing the register and doing inventory and counting at the end of the night. Or, hey, I really liked the customer service piece of it. Think about those skills that you want and those soft skills that you have and highlight the soft skills on your profile and connect with people in different industries that you find interesting. Learn about what they're doing, learn about what their career path is and where they started, and then you'll be able to figure out positions or job titles that might jump out to you to help you find your path. Great. Okay. Looks like... Um... Okay, so for someone that has worked a long time with the same 
company, but has shown career progressions or even job changes at the same place, is this detrimental to being contacted for new opportunities? So they've moved up within their company, they stayed with the same organization for some time, and they're curious to know that impact on their, you know, their ability to maybe find a new job or be contacted for new job opportunities. I think that that is somewhat subjective. Um, you're always gonna be up against the thoughts and feelings of whoever it is that might be hiring, right? Some folks might feel like, oh, they might be stuck in their ways because they've been with the same company, maybe not adept to change, but um, some hiring managers might really value that. It shows loyalty it, and with the progression, it shows that you've grown within the organization. I, I being you know, specialized in permanent placement, um, find that very valuable. So the opposite of, quite the opposite of detrimental. Um, I believe on LinkedIn, you can highlight those job changes within that same company. So it's not like you're just, you know, you know, a start date to current and one job title. And um, if you can show that progression, um, that might be able to, to help in the search. Great. Does the number of connections an individual have ha, has on LinkedIn make a difference to to you when you're recruiting? No, for me, when I search, I don't even think I pay attention to it at all. Yeah. <laughs> you can also set that to private, so that it's others aren't able to see who your connections are. Great. How much career history should you actually share? How far back do you go? I would say everything that's relevant to the job that you're looking for. Um, and if you're not looking for a job and you just want to have an up-to-date profile, I would say things that are still relevant to how you got to your position today. Um, so that would be my, my little suggestion on that. Okay. I agree. LinkedIn, you have unlimited room. So put on anything that you think could be relevant from your career history. So I think some candidates who are maybe further along in their career might feel like, you know, if I put everything, it's getting really long. Is that, you know, going to make it look like I'm older, which can be seen as a hurdle in the, in the job market. Um, for my team um, and the suggestion that I give to candidates is if you want to have a relevant amount of time, 10 years is kind of you know, what I suggest to candidates if they're unsure. If you have 10 years of experience, put that. If, it, if it's relevant, more, absolutely include, um, include previous experience, but 10 years is sufficient um, in my opinion. Great. Could you comment on advised frequency of posting um, as a way to keep yourself fresh in the minds of networking contacts? So thinking about useful posts, not fluff posts, how much posting, too much posting, and what types of posting are appropriate in your book? Mm -hmm. I think it depends on what your goal is. If your goal is to just continue like building relationships for people and like understand where they are, I think engaging with your network is more important than like you like creating original content if that's what your goal is. If you are looking to find a job, maybe you're posting about your like previous work or what you've done. If you want to be seen as an industry expert, you're going to want to post a lot more often. So I think it just depends on what your goal is from LinkedIn. If you want to just stay connected with your network and get to know people, I would say spending a little bit of time every day just engaging with the network that you have and what they post and sharing anything that's relevant to the industry that you're in or about your career is a great way to stay fresh and top of mind on LinkedIn. Great. So um, this one gets a little specific, but uh, you'll get the idea of it. Um, can it be appropriate to devote a special space, a little space in the summary to explaining what skills one's academic discipline brings? In my case, I suspect a lot of people incorrectly assume anthropology only deals with, with exotic rituals or bones. Yeah, I definitely think that's something you can talk about in your summary. And you can even just mention some of the jobs that you might be specifically looking for, or things that really interest you about a future career. Um, and so just alluding to that in that summary or just description, I think really helps and would definitely help recruiters know, you know, what you are specifically seeking. All 
All right. Looks like there's some questions here more generally about changes. And I think you kind of touched on it a little bit earlier, but um, you know, thinking they may not have the exact experience or maybe job titles and they're transitioning from field to field. Um, how should they, how can they improve their profiles? What, what can they do to kind of identify with that new field or new position they're looking to seek? Um, so I'm kind of um, streamlining some of the questions here surrounding job changes and transitions. You could definitely utilize the summary, um, put it in what exactly you're looking for and what you're interested in and why the career switch. Um, you can um, like or have interest in different companies that are in that industry that you're looking towards. Um, that kind of uh, shows up on recruiters um, page. And then also um, networking with individuals that are in that space. Um, I think it's also really important for you to understand the industry you're going into, what skills that they'll need and what skills um, that maybe you possibly have, but you just didn't know. So if you're trying to get into the IT space, um, project management is one of those things that we kind of look for. So um, if you have experience with that, put that on your uh, profile. Um, if you have experience with Drupal and other technologies, you can add that there. It might not be in a professional setting, but you do have experience in it and then um, they will show up when we do our searches. I'd, adding on to that, I think that there are myriad ways that you can describe your previous experience. And, and if you are looking to change directions, you can be somewhat strategic with the information that you include as far as what you've done in your role um, or your previous work experience, um, rather than maybe being very specific, using specific keywords that would help industry specific or, or within your field um, be targeted that way, maybe take a step back and keep it a little bit more broad and, and really paint the picture of, of you know, the skills that you were able to develop and the skills that would be transferable. Um, that's one other area that you might be able to expand on. Great, thank you. This next question makes me think about our current time right now. What about people who have an absence due to family or maybe they've been doing some light freelancing, something about absences in work history? Um, what are your thoughts about that? And do you, I'm just asking this, do you explain this in your profile? Where do you explain it? How should someone address this? Um, I feel like that's a really big question that's probably top of mind for a lot of folks right now. Yeah, I, I think, think if you've been doing free, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Ashley. <laughs> I think if you've been freelancing and doing other things, absolutely include that on there. I think people sometimes have this idea if a position is on their LinkedIn or on their resume that it has to be like a full-time job that they were doing 40 plus hours a week. And it's okay if you were freelancing or doing other things. Um, in terms of absences and putting it on there, I think that's really personal preference, especially right now. I think I've seen so much empathy in the recruiting industry to like understand that everybody's been going through something different since March. And I know a lot of people that I work with if they notice the resume gap from March on, we're not even really asking about it. We can make an assumption of why maybe their position ended. Um, so I think if you feel comfortable sharing or if you want to share, absolutely do that. If you don't, it's something you can always talk about during an initial phone interview or um, an actual in-person conversation with someone. Perfect, that's exactly what I was gonna say. So maybe two, uh, two questions, that I, two last questions I'll ask you. Um, besides ineffective or poor etiquette via direct emails, outreach, is there anything else that people do on LinkedIn that drives you crazy? The unoriginality that gets me all the time with the standard message they send me. Um, yeah, that's the one thing that I'm like, man, just put in a little bit effort and personalize that message and you know you might get a response from me. I think one thing that is is not I'm not so keen on is negativity. Just keep it positive. Don't say anything negative about a past employer. It's not the place to air your frustrations. Um, I think that it's a great place to have dialogue and to talk about anything really that can happen in the job market world in someone's career, but just keep it positive. Mm -hmm. And then, um what are some good resources for someone maybe just starting off with LinkedIn? Someone mentions that, you know, um, they're 68 years old and they like to continue working to 70. How do they get started with LinkedIn? And I 
there's probably, I can probably name some resources through the Alumni Association, but uh, you may also know of some resources as well. One thing I'll throw out there is Robert Half has a blog where you can throw in a keyword and search. So if you go to the Robert Half blog and type in LinkedIn, there's all kinds of articles that you might be able to find. Um, also Google is another great resource just to, to kind of find out more detail on what other, you know, others might be saying about how to best utilize LinkedIn. Yeah, I agree. I think basically just like starting out by putting what you would have on your resume onto your LinkedIn, uploading your headshot if you have one. Um, and if you like, I know there's some people who like, I've been in a job for 20 years, like, I don't even know where to start. I think like mm -hmm. Hannah said, like, taking back, you know, like, what are your like most relevant experiences? What does that last 10 years look like? And what's your goal for the next two years? If it is to continue on where you're at right now, you might not need a LinkedIn if you're not looking to make connections and make a career move. If you do, because you want to provide recommendations for other people that you're working with, or if you want to make a switch, focus in on like, again, what your goal is from LinkedIn and then set it up from there. Great, thanks. Anything else? Yeah, I know a LinkedIn has a LinkedIn university. You kind of type those words in, there are some nice, um, handouts on how to navigate LinkedIn and, and tips on what to include in your profile. And so that those are some good resources that are available for free. And then through the Alumni Association, uh, we have a collection of videos that we've done or webinars that we've done over time. And we have, we've done other sessions on how to improve your LinkedIn profile or how to get started and all of that. So that those are also good resources for you available through the Alumni Association. And so um, that brings us to time about, and I really want to thank each and every one of our recruiters today for answering so many questions that we got on today's topic. It's definitely a hot topic for a lot of folks who are in the job market, who may be looking to improve their profiles. So I appreciate your time and energy. Thank you for being with our audience today. And um, I'll be sending out the recording of this webinar to anyone who's registered for today's um, webinar and also a survey. So the survey usually asks, uh, how can we improve your experience and um, any topics you'd like to see us do in the future? So feel free to give us your feedback. We really take that seriously. And I look forward to um, seeing, maybe not seeing you, but having you at the next webinar. So thank you everyone for your time. Have a great day and until next time. Bye. Bye everybody. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Thank you. Yes, thank you.